I still remember Katie, the first person I ever marked with a cross of ash. She was four years old, a child I knew from Children's Chapel at my very first parish. I remember her because in all the preparation for Ash Wednesday and all the heady theological discussions we had in seminary classrooms, I just I hadn't thought through the way it would feel to place ashes on the head of a child. Yesterday, I, along with many of the clergy here at St. Michael, marked hundreds of heads with a cross of ash, saying, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Our faith in Christ teaches us that this life is not the end, only the beginning, that God loves us with an abundant grace that promises us eternal life. Yet I have never gotten used to or comfortable with placing ashes on the heads of children. You know, children, they're beautiful. They're glorious examples of God's profound love, and they seem too innocent to receive a mark of mortality. But then as I left services yesterday, I heard the news. At least 17 people, many of them children, murdered in Parkland, Florida, with countless others injured, physically and emotionally. And all at once, the ashes on our foreheads became very real. You know, this is the world we live in. It's not some imaginary place. The ashes on our heads are not some theological idea or construct. We are face to face again with a tragedy that reduces us to tears, that makes us angry, or even leaves us lost. But when I woke up this morning to the happy, smiling faces of my own children, ready for another day at school, I remembered that our lives really are a gift and that we can use that gift to make our world a better place. So today, don't be afraid to read the horrific news from Parkland and wonder how this can happen. Our anger at injustice is righteous and powerful. Remember that our lives should be the gift of hope our world needs. Yes, we may have been reminded of our own mortality yesterday, but those ashes on our foreheads are a call to action today. We have been blessed by the powerful love of God, and the power of God's Spirit is in each one of us. So don't stay in a place of grief or hurt for long, but use the pain with God's help to change the world for the good. Hug a friend, kiss your children, and know that you are not alone. We need each other to be part of the change we seek, perhaps now more than ever. Our children deserve better, and so do we. We can change the world together. May God bless those who grieve today, and may God bless us with the gift of resolve to never give up. Please join me in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, you know the anguish of the sorrowful, you are attentive to the prayers of the brokenhearted. Hear your people who cry out to you in their need. Strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. Be near to all those who have been touched by violence. Be for them a steady comfort and a safe resting place. May hate be replaced with love, violence with peace, and darkness with your light. All this we ask in the name of Christ. Amen.